All right, take us through the mud. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, let's go. guys really liked the review of the Porsche Taycan so did I I'm actually in love with that car but this weekend actually this next 10 days I have a way better car it's this one it's actually not this one I actually got to drive this one yesterday this is a 1957 Speedster and it was a lot of fun it was kind of just a privilege and a pleasure to a friend what I have though is behind it and that is this brand new Defender and I put it up on my Instagram stories and a lot of people were wondering what's it like tell us your review I've now been driving it for four days and I like it I really do I don't know if I would buy it I don't know if I'm a super fan of it I really like the old Defenders kind of more my speed but this one is a cool reboot I just don't know if they nailed it but it is year one they've got a long way to go with them as they did with their other ones many years. But wanted to do a bit of a review on this, tell you about it, about some of the features I like, some of the things I don't like. Yeah, let's get into it. All right, so when you lock and unlock the car, these mirrors, they open up for parking. I don't know if anyone's even gonna get close enough because the fenders are just that wide anyway. So does this really matter? Unclear, but it is a nice luxurious feature. The thing I don't like, which I can't show you right now because it is daytime, is they have a camera right here which projects a logo on the ground. I've seen it in other cars when you open the doors, BMW, Mercedes, Lincoln even does it now. But this one doesn't just put the symbol for Land Rover out, it has a small graphic of the Defender, which you know you're driving the car, why do we need to see a graphic? Logo, kind of cool for branding, but it's just a little weird. It's like a square that says Defender underneath. It's just, I think they kind of missed it with that. Right here on this model, they have the engine snorkel. So you can go underwater to approximately halfway up the door, which is a pretty cool feature. And they did it in a really sleek way. So it doesn't look like a huge add-on. It's not coming off the top like usual. This one I have has really cool kind of grip here. You can stand on it, it's got this 110 graphic. This is the Defender 110 four-door, not a 90, which is the two-door traditional. You've got the Defender in gloss and black. You got your vents. The lighting, I think they did really nicely. Big, new, modern lighting. You get the 20-inch rims in the front. Um, again, pretty nice, pretty clean, looks good. Um, and this one has the accessories box on the side. I haven't opened it yet. Maybe we should do that. You got a little, you gonna take your laptop on a trip. There you go. Again, cool accessory, maybe not needed or that functional, but it exists. Then you have the spare tire on the back, obviously great. I really like this lighting detail. I think they did a great job with that. This is a big problem for me. I'm going to tell you why in a second, but remember, that that camera's up there. And then you've got the roof rack on here, which was a really nice big roof rack. You can slide these in all different positions. I really like the colorway of this. The square is interesting, not really needed. It bothers me a lot. Imagine how good this thing would look, taking that square off. This door is extremely heavy. It feels like a tank. You've got your little cone you put down on the street if you got an emergency there's a lot of great functional stuff in here or if you're changing a tire got a little compartment here you have all kind of stuff here which I believe is for how the tent adds on but you can also use these buttons right here to lower and raise the car I'm assuming if the tent is here it might have come up or down so pressing the button up looks like a good six inches and that is a big, big raise. Definitely makes the truck feel a lot bigger. Two cup holders, which you might think is weird, but if you're using this piece as more of a bed, 
it definitely starts to make sense that you have these things. Plus you have optional air conditioning control in the rear, which again, if you're using this as a sleep situation, is pretty nice. You've also got your power outlet here, your 110, um, which is good. And then on this side, you got your cigarette lighter if you're blowing things up. You have these cool little lights here that just allow for a little bit of skylight, which is a nice feature. That's blacked out because of the box on the outside. You have these, which are just functional. Um, and then a nice rugged back of seat, which is just so important. I don't know why people do cloth. We're always storing stuff. So why don't you make them like this instead of carpet? This is a good idea. I respect that a lot. Looks like there's actually two more seats back here, which uh, may be the case. Wow. I did not know that. So these are not functional at all, unless you're a two year old or a four year old. It's a very small leg room, two small seats, but could be functional for something, especially if these are down or these are out. These could be really nice additions. And they have a really nice backrest. So yeah, there's something I didn't know, just found out. The back seat's pretty nice. It's actually pretty roomy. This is a pretty big, easy way to sit. Um, and pretty comfortable seats, much more comfortable than I had assumed they'd be. It has your classic armrest here, two cup holders, nothing fancy, but it works. The seat folds down, the seat folds down separately. So you got your two thirds and a third split as per usual. I don't know if that's a microphone or I believe it is though. So this would be really cool if this is a microphone everyone in the car could talk hands-free which should be a thing and i really respect that if that's what that is which i assume that is you've got your back of the seat usb ports which are very key for kids or anyone riding back here to do charging you have all your ac digital buttons actually and then you have again usbs usbs Nothing crazy to see here, but it is roomy. It is a good amount of space and you have all your controls I think it's good plus this moonroof comes all the way back for some light. It's beautiful All right, let's talk about this cockpit driver's seat situation so pretty simple you got your start stop button here put on the brake as always and the whole Dashboard kind of lights up now you have options on the dash. Also, missed that, sorry, but the moonroof automatically opens when you get in, which is cool. Not really needed, you should be able to do it if you want, but it is nice, I guess, while we're here. I'll show you how much this opens. You can tilt it or push it back. Obviously, we have a roof rack, so it covers it, but it goes about halfway. It's a nice amount of air. So starting with the information console, you can change Get your vehicle, you got your media, information, and the display. Display, you can change the left panel to the clock, four by four info, trip summary, media, whatever you want. You can customize everything, driver assistance. Let's do that for now. Then right panel, and then you can do layout. So layout is two dial. You can make it like that. Or you can do full map, which everyone's doing now, which is cool. I personally like the uh, two dial, kind of more classic. Then you have your volume control here, super easy, which I like. Your voice commands, this controls all the up front, distance, heated steering wheel, etc. Super easy. And then you get into your navigation, seats, up, down, whatever you want. Got your heaters. This is kind of where it gets cool. Towing and trailers, you can set things up. Climate, obviously, cameras, valet mode, eco data, which is actually kind of cool. You can see how much your car is really having an energy impact by each kind of unit. If you want to nerd out on how to improve your efficiency, etc., see your history. Four by four is really cool. So basically, it tells you what you can do with your car um, and how to do it. So wade sensing is the water, 
as I said, you can go about halfway out the door, which is 2.7 feet. Pretty cool. Am I willing to do that myself in a car I don't own? Not really. I don't even know if I do it on a car I own, but anyway, cool feature. All those modes are controlled from right here. So you can click this and then you can go to each one. So gravel, snow, they'll tell you. Okay, so not interested in doing that right now. Low range selected for that. Sand, cross off dry sandy ground. Wheels can sink easily. And then you got your wade, which is your water program. And the car is now rising. I don't know if you can see that, but we are going up. I'm gonna go back to comfort because that's kind of what we're doing right now. And the car is lowering itself again. This program to me is really cool and I appreciate this feature. You can manually just lower your car up or down here if you want. This is um, for going down hills, slowing down the revs. This is turn your auto start on and off when you pull up at lights with your park brake, you got your traction control, you got your low gear, which again, that's what it was recommending, put in low gear. So you just literally press the brake, choose that, and it'll go into low. And then you got your AC, everything you need here, super easy. So I like all those features a lot. Other things I like is how they did the dash. The dash is open in behind. There's always space that we're not using. Why not just make it usable? You have a USB up here, you have a USB-C here, USB here, and then again, the, the charge port um, for the lighter. But it's just nice to have this open. There's suede detail in here, which is also really nice. And you got little compartments over here, good for your phone, wallet, etc. Now you also have Bluetooth charging right here, wireless, you can just set your phone down, that'll charge. And this is really cool. This is a cooled little container, so you can keep a drink cold, something cold in there, which is great. And then you can also have your cup holders, some of my sunglasses, or you can cover it up, use it as a shelf, turn that around, cover this up. If you don't want to charge your phone and use that as a shelf, whatever you want. You've got another tray down here, which is really good, and another one here. So there's a lot of just storage kicking around in here, which is amazing and I really appreciate. Also lots of light. You've got your traditional sunglass holder up here. But this is something I want to talk about. You remember I talked about the camera in the back? This is a digital screen. Now, I haven't Googled yet if you're able to turn it off and just have a mirror, but it's kind of problematic and I'll tell you why. This digital screen, one, I didn't realize how much I looked at myself. I'm like, do I feel tired today? Do I look tired? Looking, can't see. Very minimal problem, actually not a problem at all. More of my vanity problem. Second problem I thought of as I'm about to have a child is I can't look in the mirror and see anything in the back seat. It's a camera on the back. So I'm gonna have to physically turn around and check on my child or hang some sort of mirror here. But there's no way that I see anyway. Oh. I just figured it out. Kind of like that I was on this rent. So there's these six buttons here, garage door. And then here you hit this and all it gives you is the option for either the brightness lowering or raising the mirror at the back. See how that's digital? I thought that was pretty crazy and didn't understand why, because when cars pull up, you can barely see the top of them because this thing's so high and that camera's so high, so it feels like they're gonna rear end you, but they don't. But what I just discovered while we were talking and now would make me a lot happier is this, which I thought was just for brights or not, actually clicks into mirror mode. Hey, there I am, and I can see in the back seat. All right solved the problem. I didn't think they'd be that crazy to do that, but it seemed insane. Anyway, that's way cooler. So I'm happy about that. And I'm going to leave this as a mirror. Way better. And that's my GoPro in case you guys wonder what I'm using. But I listed it in the bottom of my vlogs. Anyway, that's the interior of the car. Let's look under the hood. I haven't seen it yet. Probably something good to do. I'm sure it's covered in plastic and a lot, but as predicted, not much to see here. And this is only a V6. Yeah, I don't think they make a V8 yet, but a V8 would be very welcomed in this. Definitely drives really nice and it's a great highway cruiser, but let's take this thing out, do a little drive through, and then I think later this afternoon or tomorrow morning, I'm gonna take it off-roading, try and get some good footage to wrap this thing up. But this is the Defender 110, 2020 Land Rover Defender 110. It's a great car. I love driving out here, it was great on the highway, but uh, I'm excited to take it off-roading 
which I'm hopefully gonna do tomorrow morning. Cause you know I like to give you some shots that are a little more interesting than not. Last note, the sound system in here is Meridian. It's good, but as you know, I'm kind of an audiophile. I love my music. DJing is a career for me. It's not that good. So you may have to upgrade. There might be a bigger option than the one I have in here, but that's that. That's the Defender so far. I like it. I'm now liking it way more because I figured this mirror out, it was really bothering me. Again, I just like how the old ones look. I thought it'd be cool if they just kind of retrofitted and kept that design a little more than this one, but this is cool. It's definitely functional. It's priced pretty appropriately for what it is. And I think if you need something that can definitely handle all the elements that you're looking for, and you're gonna do some serious off-roading, go through some serious water, go through some mud, some sand, some rock crawling, it's this or a Jeep, I guess. I think you can go crazy and get the winches, get everything. Anyway, I'm gonna leave that here, leave that with you. I'm gonna go take this thing out and let's get muddy, hopefully. It's been dry, we're not gonna get too muddy, but we'll take it off-roading. All right, now this is the environment you wanna be in with this kind of car. We got a mud puddle. We got Hannah behind the wheel, me behind the drone, the camera, but this is fun. Now I'm loving this car. We got some sick drone shots. We got some sick still shots in the mud for the gram. This is fun, but now I want to drive through this thing. Hannah's had all the pleasure. Let's see what she thinks. That was great for me. How was it for you? <laughs> How fun has this been? <laughs> you love it? Yeah, it was awesome. It looks so cool. What did yeah. you think? How did it feel going through there? I mean, like, it was no, like, no issue for this car. <laughs> Would you buy this thing? Um, if you had a puddle like this in your backyard? Yeah, if I had a puddle like that in my backyard, or how to get through that every day for any purpose. <laughs> this would be a great car. <laughs> I was nervous that they was gonna splash so far up. They get me? That it was gonna get you, but it was also that it was gonna get me. That's why I kept, kept oh, yeah. rolling up the windows. Roll up that window, girl. Windows. Love you. Love you. Thing looks good. This is my wife, Hannah. If you don't follow her, follow her down below. You'll see it. Follow me, subscribe to this channel, and definitely find a wife that can drive through the mud. It's just that much better. But this thing is good. Again, it's practical for a lot of things. It's a good on the highway car. You've loved it on the highway. Yeah, it's comfortable. It's a comfortable ride. Comfortable drive, sound system's okay. You can take it in this much water if you want. We kind of did, but not really. But it's a great car. Up to you folks. I'm just here to review them. The Land Rover Defender 110. Do the math. <laughs>